Okay, so the differences between the versions um for 1.7 people play 1.7.2, 1.7.4 or 1.7.10. Um 1.7.4 is the best uh because sometimes when you're towering you can get baby zombies riding chickens. And then the baby zombies despawn, but the chickens don't. So, very, very slight advantage. Um, 1.7 has the chicken jockeys, but the chickens despawn when you go 128 blocks away. Um, 1.7.10 has skins. The advantage for 1.7.4 is very small so i don't know if other people care a lot about the differences but um i'm playing on 1.7.2 because i can't run 1.7.4 or .10 without lag spikes um unless i use optifine and i think optifine is cheating because it removes some nether fog, uh, but nobody else cares. Um, oh, you can get skins with texture packs in other versions, so that's not a big deal. It's a little bit of work, but whatever. Um... Yeah, chicken jockeys don't spawn in 1.7.2, so that doesn't really matter if you're new, and if you're not new, this video isn't worth watching, probably, <clears throat> because I'm not going to be talking about world record strategies at all. Um, Obviously. Um, should I watch Anthony's video in the middle of my video? Ah, oh, man. It's just long. I gotta go to sleep, you know? Um, what was I gonna talk about? Right, first day. Uh, you load up a world. Um, there we go. That's a world. Um, you're going to spend the first day collecting resources, preparing for the first night. This is assuming you're going to be playing for sub 40. Um, because sub 40 is the first, like, milestone, in my opinion. Uh... The time barriers in this version are fairly like important because the speedrun is day-night cycle based. Um, and what that means is Endermen spawn at night. So we can't get pearls faster than um, nighttime. So... Sub 40 is important because it means you spend the first day collecting resources, the first night towering, and then the next day getting blaze rods and maybe triangulating, and then you have some time left over for the end game, which is 
triangulation and the end fight. Um, so you're gonna go get wood. Uh, I only get three wood. Other people get four wood. Um, four wood is useful because. when you are crafting. This is me crafting with three wood. Sorry, this is me crafting with four wood worth of materials. Um, and you see I have wood planks left over. So after I make my stone pickaxe. Um, I'm going to break more cobblestone to make a furnace, and then I can use this remaining wood to smelt my iron. Um, so if you only have three wood before you enter a cave, you're only left with this material, these materials, and you have a pickaxe and a wood planks for fuel. And that only makes two iron ingots. Um, the reason why some people get four wood is because a lot of the time you would prefer three ingots when you exit your cave to craft um, flint and steel and shears, which are very important to getting your materials. The way that I keep track of how many materials I need to gather are by keeping everything that's important on my hotbar. Um... So like this, this, these are all the materials that I need in the first day. And you can see that everything is on my hotbar besides the extra leaves. Um, so the reason why people, the minimum iron you can get, you want to get from a cave is six because you need these three items to complete the rest of the run. Um, if you get more iron, you can make your sword iron, your pickaxe iron, your shovel iron. Um, better sword gives you an easier blaze fight and faster sword tower. Better shovel gives you, um, more flint because you break the gravel faster. And a better pickaxe gives you... Let's you mine out the blaze spawner faster and lets you dig your fall tower faster. I suppose you would have some gravel as well. Where's gravel? And wood. How much wood do you get? I normally try to get less than 12. 12 is the max. Um, if we're playing safe, get like 13, 14, I guess. Just to have excess crafts, plenty of beds and stuff. Um, so at this point, I've exited the cave, gone up here, broke trees and stuff. I'm, I cooked pigs, I sheared sheep. I have tons of wool. And now uh, it's been about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, turns to nighttime. Um, so typically before this, at say around nine minutes, you want to start building your tower. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine minutes is a good time.
So, a very smooth transition to talking about towers. Did I forget anything about the first day? I sure hope not. I'm not on a peaceful right I am on peaceful. Ah. Um So I'm going to talk about Sword Tower first because I believe Sword Tower is still an acceptable choice. Um Max farms sub 25s with Sword Tower. So Spinnaker did as well. Is it, it's like it's fine for sub 25, but those are really good players. So I would recommend using Sword Tower until you want to try for sub 30. Uh, when you feel like you're ready for sub-30, I would say try to do first day nether and try to do a fall tower. Um, because those are better. It might be a little bit difficult if you try to switch both strategies at the same time, because fall towers also take longer to build. Um... So, if you'd like, you can switch. I would recommend switching to first day nether first, and then switching your tower once you feel comfortable with first day nether. Yes. So, with that all being said, um, sword towers. actually uh let me show you what a complete sword tower looks not being surrounded by everything else although okay uh yes this is the This is the base of the sword tower that I prefer. Um, how do I explain this? There's so much to talk about, and it's all kind of connected. Um, so the way towers work are you stack up really high, you place a bed, and you set your spawn point by sleeping in the bed. Then um you would you can exploit uh several mechanics this the way that i fall that i fell here without taking damage is um spawn protection so i respawned and then i did not take damage for a couple seconds so you're going to use that to fall to an initial height, which is called the ledge. And then you're going to continue falling um, to your second and third ladders. Or I guess these are all three ladders. The reason why we do this is to exploit um, mob spawning mechanics the goal of a tower is to kill Endermen. So, we're, we didn't have any Endermen on that fall. So we're going to continue falling until we get Endermen. Um, when you fall to your ledge, you want to wait a little. Uh, you want to wait until this second number next to E is 
steady or approximately steady. And there's nothing. Um, this lava down here is so that you can die safely. And I will turn off my... Keep inventory. So now we have some Endermen. Um, but they are too far away to aggro. This one can be aggroed. So we aggro an Enderman, and the Enderman is teleporting towards us. So we're going to enter our tower and kill the Enderman with our sword. Uh, these blocks protect us from mobs. Baby zombies cannot pass through half a block. And skeletons will not shoot you because you're on a ladder. And creepers can't see you properly, so they can't explode. If you do it correctly. Um, and then we have lava down here so that we can die. Uh, our items come out from our head. So we don't have to worry about losing them to the lava as long as you close the trap door. So you want to be above two hearts. I believe that Enderman is too far to aggro, but we can try. Or we could try to fall in aggro. You see how we're not as high up, so the um, distance we can aggro the Enderman is further. Is there anything else I need to talk about? So you'd like to be above two hearts, because lava deals two hearts immediately when you enter. It deals damage in ticks of two hearts. So if you're at two hearts, you're going to die nearly instantly, and it's difficult to get the trapdoor in time. And yeah, that is basically how Sword Tower works. Yeah, this this is a good way. I have I've I've broken these blocks. Um that should not be happening. So I've broken these blocks so that I can go out and look at Enderman here. I have this leaf here because mobs will not spawn on a leaf, so I don't have to worry about a creeper blowing up, spawning here and blowing up my tower. Um, let's get in. Um, if you hang out here, creepers might blow up. And now let's talk about when you want to exit the tower. Er, no, 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 a couple more things first. The... This setup, the nether brick, these two nether brick and these two trapdoors and this leaf is spider protection. If this isn't here, spiders will swarm the top of your tower. Let's see if we can... Nope, they're too far away. Spiders will swarm the top of your tower eventually and um, make it difficult to fall in this one-by-one -one hole that we're standing in right now. Um, this setup makes it so spiders are trapped in this, like, area that we're jumping to look through right now. So we don't have to worry about them messing with us. Um, let me see if I can demonstrate. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that. Look, sometimes you get lucky, the spiders all disappear from the hole. But right now the spiders are trying to get under me. Um, and you see how they hit me out.
So let's rebuild the spider protection. Um, there are alternatives to spider protection, which I will show. Um, I like this because it lets you exit the tower easily. Oops, I lost all my items. Um, that's okay. That's a lot of spawns. Um, this wasn't what I meant to do. Let me die. Say that you have Endermen which spawn, but they're too far to aggro. Um, we don't have any right now. These are aggroable if I, especially if I go down. But if you catch this ladder, then you can run around and say there was an Enderman over here. I can aggro the Enderman, and then I can try to run back to my tower. And if you make the jump, you get back into your tower, you kill the Enderman, and then you die. So that's how leaving the tower works. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that if you're not yet comfortable with Sword Tower. That is the most difficult part of Sword Tower, and the most skill-based, skill-intensive part. Um, if you're not leaving the tower, you want to fall from this ladder onto this ladder, because you take some damage, and then you might also take damage from the Enderman hitting you. Um, but you want to fall from this ladder to this ladder safely, to not take even more damage and die instantly. The reason why you want to take damage is so that the lava kills you faster, and your tower is slightly faster again. Um, right, right, right. Spider protection. The reason why my setup is the best is because it lets you enter the tower from so many angles. Um, I can enter from this angle and the other angle and from the back. The back is pretty strict. You have to have sprint. You can't really make these if you run out of sprint, so pay attention to that. Um, and on the back, you have to be careful to not bump the nether brick. These are easy to make, and you can also place some here if you'd like. No, you can't. Whoa. I guess you can just jump there. Um, but the point is that you have three points of access, and you you as you get better, you can kite mobs easily and run around to a different section where there aren't any mobs, and then get in your tower easily, safely. If you want to be safer, this is a difficult strategy. Um, you can use a different spider protection, which is this spider protection. Um, it's just three nether brick instead. You would... Let me show you how you would build this. You would build up two. Sorry. You would build up two. Out one. And then place your nether brick on this leaf. You would build up one more, break this leaf, break those two leaves, and now you have one entrance to your tower, and then you can continue building your tower the way you normally would. Um, and then either at the start or at the end, you would want to place a leaf here to be able to access your tower. Um, yeah. These are the two spider protections that I recommend. And now let's go over how to build the tower. I have some numbers. Three, 18, 64 plus 25, and 18. Um, 
those are how often you want to place your ladder. So going on peaceful and collecting tower materials. This is how you would build a tower. If I don't mess it up. Um, so we've already, if you recall the numbers, we've already done three. Um, the three refers to these three blocks, two leaves and a wooden plank. Um, I have these numbers written down on a computer that I also use to read chat. Um, but I've also memorized them just because I build the same tower repeatedly. Um, so the number three means that you're counting each block you're placing and you want to place a ladder on the number that you've written down. So you're counting one, two, and then you know you're going to place a ladder, so you switch to a non-leaf block, place it, and place the ladder. Um, the next number is, what was it, 18? So you'd build up 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And I made a mistake. On 18, you're supposed to switch to a solid block again. And place a ladder. And then you would continue with 64, which is a whole stack, and 25. Um, normally, I count 25 and then place. Um, I, 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 you have several stacks of leaves from your first day, so I would count out 25. Um, and then I would swap to a full stack and place that entire stack down. So that's 25, and now I can place this entire stack of leaves, which I'm not going to do because that takes a while. And then when I have one block left, I would swap to a solid block and then um, not place my final ladder. Not place my final ladder. When I have one leaf block left, I would know that it's time to do the ledge. So you would build this setup. If I can land properly. So this is the ledge setup that I've just built here on my totally real connected tower. Um, did I mess up my entire explanation? I'm sorry. Um, So this one is different because it's a ledge and it's not a ladder. So you would actually place your final block. Um, you would count 25 and then swap to a full stack and then place that entire stack down and then build the ledge. Um, so say I've used my stack and then I build the ledge. And now I'm ready to continue with the last number, 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And this one does have to be a solid block. <laughs> Good night, Anthony. Um, that was not what I meant to do. You can build up this protection if you'd like. Um, it's not necessary if you're doing this sort of ledge. So, to clarify, because I'm dumb and I said the wrong thing. Um, you have four numbers that you have to keep track of. Three, 18, 89, and 18. Um, 89 can also be 25 plus 64. When you place three, your third block is a solid block with a ladder. When you place 18, it's a solid block with a ladder. When you place... 89 it's not a solid block because you are building the ledge you're going to place 89 and then after you finish that full stack of leaves you build the ledge and you continue with another 18 and on the 18th block it's a solid block and then two out to the side for your bed uh this has to be a solid block if this is a leap uh, you cannot respawn on the leaf. So, your tower will not work. You're going to spawn at the normal spawn point instead of on top of your tower. I thought I was in creative. Right, so we built the the tower. I explained the numbers. Oh my god, that was so. Ah, oh, hard. Um, I placed these out one to the side and then two blocks in between. So one to the side, two sp for space, and then just because that's an easy jump to make. Um, when you're sprinting. If you place it closer, um, Enderman might, might have weird pathfinding issues, so I prefer this. Um, you can place this at the start of the tower also, because once you finish your tower, it's nighttime because you've slept. So there will be mobs around and it will be harder to build. Uh, so once you sleep in your bed, you're going to fall down your ladders safely, not taking any damage, and then fall into your hole. You're going to have one ladder left. Um, and two trapdoors, because you made four trapdoors at the start. And then you are going to build this setup with a ladder and then a trapdoor below it. Um, the trapdoor has to be on the bottom part of the block. If the trapdoor is instead like this, how do I, I, I can't place the letters in the way. That's also wrong. Yeah, if the ladder is like this, um, this is incorrect because you can't be on the ladder while you're like punching outside, uh, you're going to have problems with creepers exploding if you do this. So, place your trapdoor correctly. And then you will break another block below that and place your lava. And now you are ready to begin your sword tower. 
Uh, if you'd like, you can exit your tower and aggro some Endermen, come back into your tower, kill them, and then bam, first tower cycle, and then you would continue as I've shown before. Is that everything about? I think that's everything. I've been talking for so long. But I am trying to say literally everything that I can remember. I've been playing on this for so long that the cacti are growing. I think that's everything. Um, I'll have the numbers for the towers in the description of the video. Blaze fights? Let's do blaze fights. Um, there are several blaze fight strategies. Um, don't pay attention to the ones that I don't talk about, because these are all old. Um, and some of them have been updated, but some have not. This is the classic cage. This is kind of in the way. Um, so you come across a spawner, it's going to look like this, except without the signs, and there will be a blaze instead of a pig. Shocking. Um, you want to build this. You want to place the blocks that are cobblestone, stone, and gravel. Um, the reason why this block is a gravel is because you can break it to come up to the spawner kill blazes that are hanging out in this corner or this corner and you can come back down in the spawner um let me demonstrate that might be better i hope i don't die to blazes that would be embarrassing uh They'll say, oh no, I can't, I can't kill those. It's all right. Just build your cage setup. There you go. Um, not playing this exactly the way you want to play cage because I also don't use cage. Uh, let me show the faster way to build it. Damn. Let's get my items again. Um, assuming, so you, when you enter the blade spawner, blazes will immediately spawn. Uh, if you want to build a cage as fast as possible, place two blocks here, one block there, and gravel here. Apparently that was silverfish spawn eggs. Um, so this is the fastest way to build cage. Minimal design. Um, if you place two blocks here, you can crit blazes. Uh oh. Tutorial is not scuffed. Right. Um, so that's why I like these two blocks here. While the blazes, you, you notice that you have downtime. 
uh, say there's no more blazes. Because you've killed all of them. You're such a good gamer. You know, there's no more blazes in the spawner. What do I do? Uh, you can mine flint. You need flint for arrows in the end fight, so you overlap waiting for the blazes to spawn while also um, getting flint and getting more resources. Uh, I don't have food. actually give me fire resistance so well. Um Yes. Is there anything else in the cage? Uh you can also mine out the spawner if you would like. Um You can mine out the floor of the spawner right here. Uh, because that lets more blazes spawn, but then you are hanging out in the spawner area with angry blazes. And you could get shot. So this is a very safe way to play blazes. You do need to aggro them, because otherwise they won't move towards you. Um, you see how this blaze doesn't have the fire on it, so it's not moving towards me, while this blaze has fire and it is moving towards me. So eventually this blaze will come down the stair, unless it jumps up. So you see it comes towards me very slowly and then I can get blaze rods without getting hit. So occasionally you would want to peek forward, get new blazes to aggro onto you, especially if you like see any that aren't aggroed. Um, you don't want to spend too long here. Because if you do, then they will shoot at you, or punch you, and then you take damage. Anything else about Cage? Seems good. Best Cage. Um... Let's find my blaze fight practice. There's two types of spawners, enclosed and exposed. Um, enclosed is if there's a netherrack roof on top of it, which prevents the blazes from flying away. And exposed is this where it's over lava or over terrain um not covered up like this one that one is also exposed but there's like a lot of fortress near it so i i when i practice my bla blaze fights i practice on this spawner um You can do cage, but it is a lot more difficult because the blazes will go over your cage. They'll walk on top of this cobblestone and attack you. Uh, so you can try to do it. Oh, I forgot the... Forgot my gravel. Um... You see again how the one that's aggroed onto me and on fire is moving towards me. The ones that aren't aggroed are not. So I want to go forward. I can't aggro them. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I would kill this blaze and then mine this, come up, aggro them, and then come back down to hide. But it is more difficult on an exposed spawner. Um, gas can spawn, shoot at you. Blazes can spawn on the fortress and shoot at you from behind when you're looking at these blazes. Uh, so. 
that is why I practice with a different setup. Um, let me show you. Yeah. Mm, no, I, I I won't show you an actual blaze practice because. That doesn't really matter. Um, I'll show you the other two setups that I wanted to discuss, and then we will move on. Hopefully, keeping this shorter than the ten-hour-long tower tutorial. Um, so the way that I practice blazes, I would enter the spawner, kill the blaze. Um, in actual practice, I would go out and kill this blaze, but pretend it's not there. Um, ooh, you went out and you killed the blaze, good job. Then I would build this defense, um, in a U-shape. Uh, this is Sea Skull's method for fighting blazes. Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, let me leave them alive. Not exactly what I wanted. I need them to be willing to shoot at me. Um, so if you hide behind here, you are mostly protected. You can break this block and hide a, like a couple pixels over to be fully protected, but... Um, most of the time you don't have to. Uh, you place this gravel when you are being shot at. Because it can catch important fireballs. Sometimes a fireball... That was not what I was trying to illustrate. Um, sometimes a blaze will shoot a fireball at you and you're hiding right here. So if that block isn't there, the fireball like has a irritating hitbox that can make it just barely touch you. Um, but if this is there, the fireball can hit the top of the gravel and instead it will set this on fire. Um, and then you can break the gravel, go up, kill the blazes. Um, and placing and breaking the gravel gives you flint, so that's why you use gravel instead of a cobblestone or something. Um, it's important that these blocks are not flammable. You will have leaves. Uh, don't use leaves, because they will burn, and then you'll die and be sad. I mine out the spawner when I fight blazes. Um, yeah, I'll show you the... Let me show you the... prioritization of mining as well. Um, so people study this. Uh, I can't recall their names, so I can't give credit in the video. Sorry. But they studied um, which blocks you should break. Um, so the order that I follow is this block, this block, this block, this block, this block, this block. So these six, uh, order doesn't really matter. But the center block is slightly preferred. Um, then you want these three. These three. Um, then these two. These two, and that one. Um, it can be a little bit difficult to reach, but you can get it. Then you have an option. Uh, you can kill blazes, and then immediately after you finish killing them, you come in here and mine the spawner. The spawner has like a cooldown of 10 seconds at minimum. So the idea is that you 
mine this and the spawner is unable to spawn so it can't spawn blazes on you or you could just go in when there's no blazes and then hope it doesn't spawn on you or if it spawns on you just leave or fight the blazes uh then you have this section um when i said you have options you have the option of leaving this section for a, li a while and then instead mining out this section um, I place these blocks because they help keep blazes within the area where they're easy to kill. So four blocks here, and then mine these. Four blocks here, mine those, um, and then Go and mine that. You can mine this before or after doing the sides. And then this is the maximum that I'm willing to mine out on an exposed spawner like this. Uh, I won't go over blaze bedding. Just ask someone how to blaze bed and they'll show you and then you can figure it out. Um, actually, whatever, I'll show you. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'm talking for too long. This is how you blaze bed wooden planks uh, bed has to be here. You cannot place it here because it will destroy the spawner. So like this, you explode it, uh, blaze TNT, assuming you haven't mined anything out. Uh, that's too many blocks to replace. Pretend the spiner, pretend the spawner has not been mined out. You would break two blocks, place them here and here, get your TNT, place it here and here, and then ignite it, and then um, get back far enough that it doesn't blow you up. Using TNT is preferred to beds. Beds create fire. Uh, TNT does not. With the bed fire, you have to put out the fire. Otherwise, it stops blazes from spawning. Um, specifically, like this fire will stop blazes from spawning on the fire, above the fire, and within like a... Uh, one block circle around it. Um, let me not use a block that will explode. So with this fire here, blazes cannot spawn in any of these nine blocks. Um, because the fire is too bright. So fire is quite significant, unless it's a couple blocks away from the spawner. Um, within like three, four blocks, I would put out the fire. I guess I ended up going over all of blaze bedding, huh? Let's see if there's anything I forgot. This is classic cage. Sea skull, except it's not look doesn't look like that. Yes, this this blaze fighting method. Um. Yes, yes, yes. One final thing to talk about. Um. The minimalist blaze fight setup is just these two blocks. Um. So blazes will spawn. I wish it spawned in a better location.
blazes will spawn and they'll be aggroed. You'll jump and aggro the, you'll bait the fireballs so that they hit on top of the cobblestone or hit like into this side of the cobblestone and don't hit you. Um, and then you'll rush in and kill the blazes, run back out. Um, this can also work as a cage-like structure where they get stuck here, they can't shoot you, but you can hit their feet. Um... That's it. That's Blaze Fights. <sighs> yes, that took forever. Um, so, 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 first night you got your stuff, second, er, first day you got your stuff, first night you towered, you got your pearls, second day you went to the nether, and now you come out, no matter what time it is, you have plenty of pearls, plenty of rods, Craft yourself some Eye of Enders. Eyes, eyes of Ender? I don't know where the S goes. Um, craft some Eyes. Throw them. You find the Stronghold. Uh, in this version, it's super epic. The Eye points to the Portal Room. I wish I had a Portal Room to show you, but um, it looks like a t end portal. I... I'm not going to bring one up because I don't want to spend a ton of time in silence while I run to an end portal. Um, here, I'll build one for you. You're going to follow the eye, you're going to draw some lines, uh, do this epic thing called triangulation, uh, where is the eye? The eye will point like either this block or this block, when it goes down, you're going to dig, you're going to find this epic room, bam, 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 and then unlike this, you're going to have, uh, uh, end portal frame spawn. Um, you do not want to walk in and you don't want to be standing on like this location and put it. Yeah. So you don't want to do that because when you do that, there is a chance that, um, you don't spawn on the end platform. You instead spawn somewhere in the void super far from the end island and you just die. Which is not epic. You don't want to enter the end and immediately die. Um... When you enter the end, you want to have a epic end fight with the dragon. Uh, the end fight is my favorite part of pre 1.9 it's very skill based uh i think it's extremely fun and i practice it a lot i think practicing the end fight is extremely important if you have a pearl and the portal looks like this you can use your pearl to get from the obsidian onto the main end island if you don't you'll have to bridge like i did um you will have crafted beds because when you use a bed in the end it explodes and it deals quite a significant amount of the dragon's health. Uh, you will have string from killing spiders either when you're towering, when you're doing your sword tower, or afterwards when you're triangulating if it's nighttime, or from the library if you do not have string yet. And you will have arrows. Um, 
You can kill skeletons, or you can kill chickens and mine flint. Um, and those are end fight essentials. Um, yes. You notice that when I place the block, or when I place the bed, I also place the block. The block was to protect me from the bed. If I don't have a block, um, I die. <sighs> block placement is very important, but um, this time I actually am only going to stick to the basics of an end fight. Let me get over to the main island again. Uh, no, let's not do that. Right. Uh, so, for the basics, you can either place a block here or a block here. Both are similar. However, they have... You should use them in different situations. Um, also... You do want to bring a bucket of water in the into the end fight because you will catch on fire a lot after using beds and you don't want to die. You want to keep your health up. Um, so you'll notice the past couple of times I placed the block here. This tends to be the better choice. Um, more generally, to make a rule... If the dragon's moving along a block, so, um, yeah, like, like, straight towards me or straight towards me from this direction, you want the block to be at the foot of the bed. Because that lets you stand in a way that brings the dragon's head to be close to the explosion. The explosion from the bed comes from about exactly here. I think it's barely, comes from barely outside of the bed. Um, so you want to angle your, you want to place yourself so that the block is covering, like, um, you want to place yourself so the block is in between, like, these pixels at the pillow of the bed and yourself. Specifically your feet, because that's, what you're, that's where you take explosion damage. Um, so, the dragon's charging from here. I will... Is the dragon charging? No. If it's charging from here, you will explode the bed like that. Um... If the dragon is charging at, say, 45 degrees, that is when you want to use the other lock placement. Um, just because it's... It, 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 that's that's how it ends up working out. Um, stand around here, and then blow it up. Anything else? Um, for complete beginners, I recommend practicing end fights until you're confident you can succeed. Uh, I recommend practicing with a full stack of arrows, not just a limited amount. Um, and I recommend shooting out all the towers before you use beds. What? So just avoid the dragon if it charges at you. Um, block your sword if you want to take less damage. I recommend learning how to dodge the dragon because that is useful. 
So say you shot out all the crystals, now you're ready to take charges, you just charge and you you want to focus on surviving at first. Um not killing yourself with a bed and not letting the dragon repeatedly charge you until you die. Darn, missed it. Um, what else can I explain? Yes. After you feel comfortable surviving in end fights, you want to set your first goal to be... 100% completion and stub 30 almost all the time. Um, which is very possible using the mechanic of shooting the dragon. Feels a little stupid to call that a mechanic, but um, er, yeah, yeah. Can show it. Uh, when you shoot the dragon, it changes its direction. So it's charging at me. If I shoot it, it changes its direction. And every time it does that, there's a 25% chance that it um, changes its direction to be towards me. Um, this also counts if you deal damage to it using a crystal. If you shoot a crystal that the dragon's connected to, then the dragon changes direction. Um, it also applies to sword hits and bed hits, but those aren't important because um, like the dragon is on you. So even if it changes its location to you, then it's already there and it'll just change it again immediately. Or hit you a couple times and then change it. That's always funny. Um, so once all the towers are down, you want to shoot the dragon to bait charges so you can deal damage to it. That is where having a stack of arrows comes in handy. You typically don't have to use a stack of arrows to get rid of all the crystals, but you will spam the dragon to keep getting charges, um, you want to give yourself plenty of beds. And then you just keep shooting at it until it dies. Will I be able to kill the dragon for this demonstration? No, I don't think so. Uh, don't do beds like that. Sorry. Um, getting carried away. Uh, don't do beds like that. Only do beds where the dragon is far away. It's like... Coming at you in a straight line, it's super easy, and you, you don't bed yourself, okay? Um, that, that was me messing around, I swear. So shoot all the crystals, then shoot the dragon. Um, once you have 100% sub-3, uh, 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 get good at the game, get sub-2 average. Um, your success rate will dip a lot, but... You'll be good. Uh, watch me. Uh, ask me for advice. Um, only once you're like actually good at end fights, though, because if you're not ready, then it's just going to be painful and you won't understand well. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
not going to go into more advanced strategies. Uh, but speaking of more advanced strategies, first day nether and fall towers. Jeez, how long have I been talking? Oh my god, it's been an hour. Jesus. Oh. Okay, first day another. Um, say you get sub 40. You're thinking, this ultimate gamer guy, he's trash. Look at how long he took to fight a dragon. Uh, I can kill the dragon in sub 3. He can't kill it in 8 minutes. What a noob. I'm ready for first day another. Alright. Uh, first day another, you want to enter... When do you want to enter? Sub 6? You want to have most of your materials and enter the lava pool. Sorry, enter the nether through a lava pool. Sub 6, let's say. Sub 6, sub 7. Then you want to find a close fortress. Um... If you are playing for first day nether, you do need a close fortress. Because you need to be out before night starts to build your tower. You need the you need a good amount of night. Hopefully by the time you're starting first day nether, you're going to be skilled at the tower and you're going to be fairly fast at it. So that you don't need the full night and you can exit the nether like 10 minutes, 11 minutes and still be able to finish, get enough, finish your tower, get enough pearls to complete the run. So that's how first day nether works. You just be faster and put the nether in the first day. However, maybe you want to, once you're confident with first day nether, say you're, you're exiting sub nine constantly, this ultimate gamer guy isn't good. He can't even get on world record pace. Um, and you want to start using fall towers. You hear they're better than sword towers. True, they are better. So... I want to talk about fall towers. Where's my my fall tower test world? Um, this is old fall tower. This is new tower. This is not important. Don't pay attention. That's how it looks. I don't recommend the netherrack build. Um, let me build it again. What if I delete decoration? Does that... Remove all the cactus from my super flat world? Yo, it does! Go on peaceful. I'm said night. I'm at two thousand. So, uh, because you're doing first day nether, you have nether brick from when you were mining the spawner. Um, you're gonna craft those into slabs. Gonna have three stacks of leaves, uh, a water bucket. Not necessary. Well, yes, necessary for the tower. Two trapdoors. Uh, you don't have to make that trapdoor craft twice for four anymore. Um, in fact, you only need one trapdoor. 
but you you end up with two. So where's my bed? I believe this is everything. You're gonna sorry, you're not gonna mind that yet. Um instead you're going to make a circle with your slabs. Technically, uh you do not need all these slabs. You are fine with this circle. Um, so yeah, you can use whatever, uh, this one, if you don't have enough blocks, saves on one slab craft, I think, something like that. Uh, after you're done, you're going to break these five blocks in the center. Replace these four with a block that Enderman cannot pick up. Typically leaves. Build up three. Break two. Build up two. Break two. Um, now, if you have hilly terrain... Um, you will want to place additional blocks. We'll discuss that in a second. Um, you're going to build across. Break this. Up. Here. Trapdoor. Ladder. Leaf. Um, note that there is a ladder. Don't forget that. You need that to not fall to your death. In this case, I am going to go into detail. Um, this is assuming you're gonna get you're good at the game. Um, I'm gonna talk about everything, explain everything. This is where you're going to be standing. Endermen are going to be falling into the hole below you. Um, and because you are in, on easy, you will have skeletons near me. At this height, they cannot see me. However, if I am one block lower, they can see me. Um, can they see me? They're over there. No, they can't, but if they happen to walk over a slab, they will shoot you. Um, so if this one were to walk on, were to just like randomly walk onto the slab, then it would start shooting at me. Um, so, if you have a hill, And there are skeletons on the hill. You're trying to just chill out, kill some endermen. However, they get mad and they shoot at you. But they miss, shoot another skeleton, sort of. Ah. <sighs> Listen, you're going to get properly aggroed, right? Never mind. If you have a big hill, big hill, ugly terrain, forcing. Skeletons are gonna see you. They're gonna get mad. They're gonna shoot you. You're gonna die because you're on half heart. Um. So, to avoid this, you can build the same setup. Except, um, 
one block higher. Build three, break two, build two more, break those two. Now you have the option of going one block higher or two blocks higher. Um, note that building this higher also makes your ledge higher. This ledge is 113 ledge. The sword tower ledge is 114 ledge. Um, I prefer to have this at 113 ledge, this fall tower ledge at 113 ledge, because if I want to build it higher, I can, and it's still within the accepted value of 113 to 115. So far, nobody's shown a significant advantage for anything within that range. Um... Which is my fault, because I was supposed to show that, but uh, I got lazy and decided I would rather play the game. So. One more time. Showing the setup. You want to hold shift there so you do not fall off as I have demonstrated. Um, then we have some new numbers. 23, 84, which is 64 plus 20, and 17. So you're going to build up 23 blocks. Um... I'm not going to build up 23 blocks. Pretend this is 23. Place a ladder. Uh, one stack plus 20. Place another ladder. Now your ledge is a ladder, not a solid platform the way it was for Sword Tower. And then 17. You're going to build your bed. This time, this setup is important because you want to properly position yourself to fall on the ladder ledge as desired. Then you're going to fall to your second ledge, and then um, you're going to fall here. That 23 blocks up to this trapdoor will leave you on half a heart, I believe. Oh, that ladder is not supposed to be there. All right, so this is the correct tower. You're going to stand here. Um, entity counter is not going up because I'm on peaceful. You're going to wait for the E counter to stabilize. E stands for entities. Mobs are entities. Other things are also entities, so that's why the number is different. Um, you're going to fall. You're going to see some endermen. You're going to aggro them while you're falling down to this platform. You see the endermen did not do what I wanted him to do. So you see that the cap is around 100. Um, so I'm going to try to fall at 90 when I see E at 90. Sharpie told me that's wrong, but um, I watched Sharpie's VOD because he said he's doing it the correct way and I don't know what he's doing differently. So, sorry. Um... Yeah. So when it hits around 90, it'll start to slow down. You'll have the rest of them spawn as you're falling. 
And you see that these Endermen are teleporting from their initial spot to very close to under my feet. Um, it is possible for an Enderman to teleport from the ground to one of these blocks, punch you, and then you die, and you have to respawn at the top, and the Enderman de despawn that you were trying to collect. Um, that's bad. Losing Enderman is bad. See that one? It had a chance of teleporting up here. The Enderman cannot teleport on the block that I am standing on, because it's only two blocks tall. Enderman is three blocks tall. So, you want to stand on... When, when you think an Enderman would be able to hit you, you want to stand... You want to move from here, where you are letting Enderman walk into the hole, and you instead want to stand over here in a safe spot, crouching and on as far away as you can, because Endermen do have reach and they can't hit you if you're, like, here, for example, in the middle of the block. They'll punch you very easily. <clears throat> um, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Okay, I know what else to talk about. Um, as soon as the Enderman walks into your hole, you want to immediately fall. Um, and fall sooner than that, because... Well, if you, if you have more than... What is it, two hearts? Okay, so firstly, firstly, um, similar to Sword Tower... When you fall off of this ladder, the Anthony ladder, um, if you see Enderman, you want to fall down to your trapdoor. If you do not see Enderman, you want to fall out onto the ground. Um, I added a block here. You, you you leave this block behind. You do not break it when you are cra creating your tower base. Um, because falling from this ladder to this leaf kills you. Um, as I will demonstrate. In case you don't believe me. So this saves you from having to fall a couple more blocks. Um, <clears throat> I am naming it the Sea Skull block because Sea Skull was trying to optimize a tower to like save a tenth of a second per cycle, and I said, "Oh, that's not very significant," and Sea Skull said, "That's extremely significant." Um. So I added it to my tower. You fall from this ladder to that leaf if you do not see Enderman and you want to reset mobs. Um... If you do see Enderman, aggro as you're falling. I think I already said that. This leaf, similar to the sword tower, you don't want to have the netherrack because mobs can spawn there. I don't think they can spawn on the trapdoor. Um, what else? What else? What else? Right. When you're building your tower. 
Actually, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, right, 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 right. So currently, um, this tower design, Chaotic Jump Tower, has the problem that if an Enderman is approaching on a diagonal path, sometimes they will get stuck um, on one of the corners of the blocks. So to solve this, you want to move to the side and move back. The Enderman will see that you've changed positions, get off the block, that it, get off the corner that it's standing on, and then you return here so the Enderman falls in the hole properly. Um... That might be fixed in some newer version of the tower. So yes, uh, this leaf block is here because you want to walk onto it. You want to be able to... This is faster than jumping up and ju falling back down. This just takes so long. You want to be able to quickly tap keys while you're aggroing under other endermen um it is a noticeable time save so that's what this block is there that's why this block is there i explain why that block's there um let's talk about the bottom of the tower um so you want to dig down 44 blocks i've already dug down one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. I don't know, man. I think it's 20. Let's find out. Yeah. Yeah. Dig down 44 blocks. I typically dig down two more just to be safe in a real run. Um, you need flint and steel to kill yourself quickly. The way that I normally go about this is when I count 40, I light myself on fire. I take two ticks of fire damage, so one heart, um, because if you only take one tick of fire damage, the fire does not stay. So you need to take two ticks, and then you continue mining. Um, I mined six just in case I miscounted. You will also fall in caves occasionally. Um, you can try to keep track of how many blocks. Try to not let it slow you down. When I mined into caves... Um, You can figure out how long it takes. Uh, firstly, you do not have to fill the gaps up. Um, let me explain what I mean. Say that there is a big cave. Right, you're... What the heck? I didn't know mine shafts could spawn. Um... Here you are, building your tower world record pace, and... Oh my god! Yo, that was a gamer clutch. Um, I survived. So epic. Um, however, I don't want to block all of these up. I, I'd have to like build up and then place these blocks up and then build up this perfect hole for my enderman to fall in. 
you don't have to do that. Um, the only time Enderman will come out of alignment with the hole is in the first several blocks of your tower. Um, here, they might... If you're, like, missing these blocks, an Enderman might be walking this way, have momentum, and then catch itself on this block. And then it might walk back in, but... Um, yeah, even if it does walk back in, then it has too much health and it won't die from the fall. 44 is exactly enough to kill an Enderman. Um, so, you want to make sure that the first, I don't know, 5 blocks, 10 blocks-ish is good. If you do encounter a cave early on, you can remember that Endermen are three blocks tall. So, um, two, two tall holes do not make a difference. And if there is a giant cave, um, the only way Endermen will fall out of alignment here is if multiple fall down at the exact same time. Which is quite uncommon. You can build these up if you want. Most of the time you don't have to build up as much as this. Um, but depending on your tower start time and when you expect to finish, you, you you know you know make decisions for yourself. Does, does, use your use your good judgment. Hmm. Is there anything else to talk about with caves? Right, um, say you are just starting to build your, build your hole, you fall down for the first time, um, there's creepers and stuff, they're gonna come attack you and blow up your tower, right? I'm not going to spawn creepers. You can imagine creepers. There's the creeper. Uh, what are you going to do? This creeper is trying to blow up your tower. You are going to... Break this block. Break another block. Come. And cover yourself. Um... And then you are going to hope that a skeleton didn't shoot the creeper. And hope that the creeper is not going to explode. So. You dug down successfully. 44, 66, whatever. Um, you're at your bottom. You're low HP. Not that low. Um, the water setup is the setup used by most runners. You build this design. You place water. Light yourself on fire. Place a block here. Um, now, when you are, if you place a leaf here, you have to remember to break it. Um, you will also break this on your first cycle. 
Now, when you fall in this exact corner, pushing up against this, sorry, not pushing up against the wall, if you... If you are pushing against the wall, you're going to fall into the water and you're not going to take any damage. That is how you want to exit your tower. Um, if you just want to check your pearls... Yes, four is an appropriate amount. Um, you're going to fall, have your inventory open, and then you're going to have a frame. You're going to have a small amount of... Damn it. Small amount of time where you can see your pearl count. You don't want to keep your inventory open the way that I did, because that is bad. Um, for this tower, if you use a trapdoor, you can do this to check pearls easily. <clears throat> In fact, you want to exit your inventory as soon as possible. Um, because... Keeping it open prevents you from respawning and does count as time lost. What else can I say? Uh, that's the tower base. Most of the time you will have water. I have developed a method um in case you don't have water. Say you you lose your water um, on a real run. I lost my water because I placed it under floating sand. The sand fell and it broke my water. After I exited the nether with my rods. Um, so I built the tower anyway. The way I was planning to exit was, um, you break your bed, <clears throat> sorry, break your bed. Oh, right, right, right. I didn't even explain the exiting. Oh my God. Um, you break your bed, you jump and that's how you clutch this ladder. Um, You do have to jump to get this ladder on the side. Um, yes, also when you're um, building your tower and exiting your cycle for the first time, you want to you want to jump down this way instead of jumping down this way, because obviously um, sorry, not your first cycle. When you're digging your hole, my apologies, getting late. Uh, you set your spawn, you want to start digging your hole, you don't want to go this way, because you're gonna, if you're on full health, you're gonna land on half a heart. If you're not on full health, you're gonna die. You want to go this way, jump, land. Um, then you dig your hole, do your thing. If you don't have water at the bottom, forget the water setup, uh, because you obviously can't do it, you, you, you break your bed, keep it for the end fight, you're gonna jump here, um, aggro any last enderman you can, um, then you're going to break this ladder. If you can sleep, there might be hostile mobs that prevent you from doing it. If you don't think you can sleep, that's fine. Um, there is a 100% successful, 100% consistent ladder clutch. And I will explain how to do it. Um, you will have noticed that when you build your tower incorrectly, you don't always catch the ladder. Uh, in fact, you need three ladders to be 100% certain that you're going to catch it at any height. 
Um, this is because the like frames per second that the game runs at 20 ticks per second, slightly different than frames per second. Um, sometimes the you're moving so fast that you pass by the ladder and there isn't a tick where you're on the ladder. So you never clutch it. Uh, what I discovered was that it's not random. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not random. It's based on the height that you're falling. And in addition, the it's correlated to when you're able to place a ladder. So you're going so to ladder clutch consistently. You're going to fall and then place the ladder and clutch it on the same tick. In order to do this, you need the same angle every single time. So, um, I have a method for that. Um, this is probably FOV dependent and screen size dependent. I play on 1080p, uh, borderless windowed. Is that how you describe it? Yeah. Um, there are these two like darker spots on the sand. Um, and that is what I look for when I am lining up to clutch. Um, I'm going to break the ladder, fall, and then I line up on the two darker spots on this sand block. And um, I place my crosshair about on them, slightly above. Oh, my bad. The cave was there. Listen, listen, listen. 100% consistent, I swear. Um, so the problem was earlier that I, I clicked when there was a cave. Uh, that doesn't work. Also, you need to note that... Um, say there's like smaller caves near the bottom. Or yeah, yeah, this this also works. If you're trying to ladder clutch, say you're you're over here, you're ladder clutching. Um, you can see that there are leaves on this wall that you placed to block up a cave. So if you're here and you're trying to ladder clutch, your back is against this sandstone wall. When you place a ladder on the leaf, it places it on the sandstone behind you. So you're going to fall and you're going to hit the ladder and die. Um, this has happened to me before, as you can tell. You either want to wait until after the leaf, which would be difficult on this. Not, not necessarily difficult, but a little risky. Um, or you could just face the other direction. Yeah, so uh, if, if that angle doesn't work for other people, I don't know, nobody's tested it, because um, nobody cares. This is a backup strategy. And yeah, that is ladder clutching. Is there anything else? I think that's it for towers. Um, I have a couple brief things.
Uh, F3. I used F3 in this tutorial because it's helpful in explaining things. F3 is not necessary. You would want to practice with F3 for the tower, learning how long you want to wait on the ledge. However, it's not necessary in a run. Um, I believe it's like three to four seconds that you want to wait. I would sit on the ledge and look at my timer um, because I can't keep track of time in my head when I'm you know, it's, it's, it's excited to be on a run. Um, yeah, F3 is not necessary for sub 40, sub 30, sub 25. Uh, for world record times, it is very, very helpful. If you're interested in PIDAR, which is a big advantage, helps with triangulation and resetting for fortresses. Uh, Spinnaker has a good tutorial. I'm not going to talk about that because I don't want to. Um, I'll link Spinnaker's tutorial in the description. Uh, right, also, um, F3 is very prevalent in 115 and 116, but not as much in 1.7, um, because, uh, Japanese runners who started off speedrunning this category um, did not use F3 and they had a very they still have a uh, purist mindset of running the game how they wanted to um, because F3 is allowed on the leaderboard and it is an advantage we use it, but um, Japanese runners still consider it cheating for the most part. So they just choose to not use it. Um, that's the reason for purist people being more common in this category. You can do whatever you want. I got sub 25 no f3 and then i started using f3 for better times um you should respect japanese runners because they've been playing the game for a long time probably and that's respectable uh so don't beat their PB, and then talk mad shit. Ah. Uh, yeah. Good luck. PB.